This is a Mining Interactive video production. Good afternoon. This is Nick Nicholas here to welcome you to Mining Interactive University, MIU. And I'm here today for this inaugural lecture with Dr. Michael Berry. Dr. Michael Berry is a pioneer in the emerging field of discovery investing. He researches and writes on companies that focus on discovery in the natural resources, high technology, and biotech sectors. While at the Darden School, University of Virginia, he was a professor of investments and has held the Wheat and Dow Chair at James Madison University. His research in the study of behavioral uh, strategies for investing has been published in numerous academic practitioner journals. He publishes morning notes on a daily basis and discusses geopolitics and their effect on capital markets. Morning Notes is a daily letter on discovery investment and subsequent wealth creation. And that's what it's all about, wealth creation, which certainly is important in these turbulent times. Over the past years, Dr. Berry has been very strong on the commodity sector and he speaks at many commodity or hard assets conferences. Over the years, we have come to realize that at universities, investing was not being taught. And there was a real need to lecture on real world investing. Today, we would like to try and remedy that with our first lecture, which we hope will assist university students and high school students alike before they enter their postgraduate lives by lecturing on real world investing 101. It's a pleasure now to introduce Dr. Michael Berry. Dr. Barry, Nick, thank you. Thank you. Well, it is a great pleasure to, to uh, speak to the, this class today and talk about a passion of mine. And just to give you a little background, I have uh, been a professor at, in both graduate school and undergraduate, teaching investments and corporate finance for many years. And I really found that uh, in, the, in the 1970s and 1980s, uh, the idea in university was that all markets were efficient and it was very difficult to beat the market. And I, I think I bring something different to it. But what happened to me in my career was that I, I left academe in um, 1994. I left a tenured professorship and went to Wall Street. And I became a value investor and I worked with some famous investors. David Dreeman was one and Bill Naskovitz at Heartland Advisors was another. And I learned a tremendous amount from these gentlemen. But one thing I also did learn is that once you're in a style, whether it's a growth investor or a value investor, whether it's small cap or large cap, these different investment styles can go out of favor and they can stay out of favor for a long time. And I'm sure many of you today will, will remember that in 1999, oil was trading for $10 a barrel. Or maybe you, maybe you don't remember that, but in fact it was. And I was buying oil stocks because I knew that oil couldn't stay there. But the problem with that is that sometimes the market stays out of whack for a very long time. So after my stay at Heartland, which I greatly enjoyed, I decided to develop a new technique that would really allow me to teach people how to invest on the, in the discovery cycle. Because my belief is that discovery never goes out of style. If you make a great world-class discovery in your future careers, whether it be a discovery in biotech, maybe it's a cure for cancer, or or a procedure uh, for Lou Gehrig's disease to, to help uh, solve that problem, or whether you discover a great new uranium mine or a gold mine, or maybe it's oil that you discover. Those, those discoveries, if they're good enough, they will always be valued well by the market, no matter whether you're in a recession or not. You know, and the other thing is in discovery investing is that we've had a horrible 18 months now of a recession in both Canada and the US. And it's really put a hole in a lot of people's wallets. And so what I want to do today in the next uh, half an hour or so is talk to you about how you can remedy some of these situations and give you a new lease on your investing life. So I'm going to talk about discovery investing. I've entitled this the wealth creation in troubling times. So the first question, I think that's a fair question uh, to ask, and I hope I can answer it, is what is discovery investing? First and foremost, it is an investing discipline. In other words, there are rules. And I'll go over some of those rules as we go through this lecture. It is an investing discipline 
primarily focused on early stage speculative investments with the potential for significant wealth creation. Now that's a mouthful, I understand that. And the word speculative bothers some people, but you know, everything we do in life, but especially in the investing sector, has some element of risk and speculation in it. And what I teach in this seminar is how to minimize the amount of speculation, make it your friend and not your enemy. Minimize the amount of risk, make risk your friend and not your enemy. So discovery investing is a discipline, there are rules to apply to it. It focuses on early stage investments and it, it relies on the fact that if you make a great discovery, uh, wh again, whether it's in the resource sector or whether it's in the biotech sector or the high tech sector, and I'll name there are many, many different ideas and uh, it can be so much fun for you in this area, that the capital markets, the stock market, uh, will discount potentially world-class assets. Now discounting is that process of looking at an asset and bringing back to today what that value really is in terms of share price. So we focus mostly on stocks that trade. And just to give you a couple of examples of great wealth creating opportunities that I've been personally associated with, one was called the outcrop at Penasquito. And the outcrop at Penasquito in the Mexican state of Zacatecas was one little outcrop in the, in the field and we over a period of six years, we drilled 700, 800 holes in this field and we discovered 1.8 billion ounces of silver, 25 million ounces of gold, and billions of tons of lead and zinc. And so that stock, which was eventually bought out, it was originally Western Silver, was the, was the incubator of this whole process, was taken out by Glamis Gold and then Glamis Gold was taken out by Gold Corp. And Gold Corp owns the asset today. But this is the essence of discovery, creating great wealth through a discovery like that. And the second one is a Canadian uh, uh, research. Uh, it's gene, it's the gene. It's in every human, it's in every animal, it's in every plant. The gene is called Factor 5A1. It's just a name. But the gene is responsible for cell death. So this gene, and it was developed at the University of Waterloo, in Waterloo, Ontario, the discovery was made by a plant biologist and they found out that in humans it works very well and so you all may know that cancer cells uh, are horrendous and they don't want to die. They, they hang around for a long time. This gene can be modified so that you can kill cancer cells and so the company that has this gene is going to be in clinical cancer trials either late this year or early next year. We're talking about uh, spring of 2009 now uh, at the Mayo Clinic and they'll be testing this gene on humans that have multiple myeloma. If this works, and we think it will because it's killed every cancer in mice that has come across, if this works then this will be a great discovery. This will be a game-changing discovery and it will create great wealth. So those are the things we look for. Now I know what you're saying is, you know, do you always find these? And the answer is no. Some discoveries processes just don't work out. And so, uh, so you have to diversify, and I'll talk a little bit about that as we go forward. What drives discovery investing? Well, it is driven by the very strong force that we all experience for a higher quality of life, but especially if you think about it now in terms of China and India and, and Brazil and Russia and the people that are living at substandard levels of lifestyle, they want a higher quality of life, and the only way they're going to find that is by continuing to make discoveries, whether it's in healthcare or the resource sector, whether it's in high tech, so that these 5.5 billion humans are going to want to have a better quality of life, and that will be dependent upon the copper and the lead and the zinc and the gold and the oil and the natural gas, all the potential discoveries that you can think of that we're going to have to have to support them. However, given the recession that we've been through and that we're still in, it is also driven by the realization that over the last year, 30 to 50 percent of the world's wealth has been destroyed. If you go back to July of 2008 when we had the biggest turndown and investors everywhere lost 20, 30, 40, 50, 80 percent of their wealth, 